Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem neighboring bitwise XOR. And honestly, I really like this problem. It's pretty original and it just kind of feels like solving a little like math puzzle. So the idea is that we are given a binary string. So it could be something like this, one, one, zero, and it's actually given in the form of an array. So not a string, but a binary array. So here's a couple examples. And the premise of the problem is that this array is the derived array, the array that we're given. But the array itself was actually made from another binary array. So for example, I think this one could have been formed with 0, 1, 0. The reason for that is each of these values. So this value itself, it represents the XOR of these two elements, this element and the element exactly to the right of it. So 0 and 1 XOR is going to be 1. So we would put a 1 here. And then 1 and 0 XOR together is also going to be 1. So we put a 1 here. Now for this last element, it doesn't have a number to the right of it. So we will kind of loop back around, assuming it's like a circular array, and then get the XOR of these two. Since they're the same number, the XOR of them is going to be 0. So that's what we get in the derived array. Remember, this is the array that we're given. And this is the array that it was derived from. Our goal is not to recreate this. In fact, I don't think it's possible to recreate it because there's always going to be at least two solutions or possibly no solutions, which is uh, what the problem is getting into. But for this example here, you can see that if we were to take this and invert it, do the opposite of it, one, zero, one, it would also satisfy the derived array because just based on the definition of exclusive or if we have a one it just means that the two values were the same or rather sorry if there's a one it tells us the two values were different it doesn't tell us anything about the values themselves it could be either zero one or it could have been one zero and the same is true for all the other ones so this one would tell us that these two are different now depending on what we picked for the first element if it was zero, then the next one has to be a one, and then the next one would have to be a zero. Or if we had started with a one, it could have been the opposite. They could have still been different this way. Honestly, I think when you kind of realize that, if you're able to make that observation, and it's not something you would necessarily be looking for, but when it comes to these types of problems, the main thing you want to be doing is trying to make some observations, trying to look for some hints or some clues on how you can try to like simplify the problem. And so now I can finally get into what the question is asking. The question is asking, is it possible for us, given the derived array, to create the original one? We don't actually have to create it, but is it possible for one to have existed that would have been able to create this array, given like that XOR rule? So at first you might think, well, what could a counterexample possibly be? Because when you think about it in that, like these two elements will decide this one. And then the next two elements will decide this one. So what would make it impossible? For example, if we had a derived array of just a bunch of ones, that tells us that the original array must have had differing bits for these two spots. So maybe a zero and a one. Well, then this uh, tells us they must have been different here as well. So maybe one and zero. And so to recreate something like this, you would just create like an alternating array. Given a derived array of a bunch of zeros, and I think that would tell us that all of the spots, like these two, would have to have been the same. So maybe all ones or even all zeros, I think, would work because each of these tells us that these two are the same. This tells us these two are the same, et cetera, et cetera. Again, I'm just like making some observations. I think this is kind of an important step. If you have no idea how to solve the problem, just start to kind of think of some examples. Think of what they would look like. Maybe there's some patterns or maybe there's not. Well, anyways, they give us this example down here, which is a very good example where it's actually not possible to create the original array because this one tells us that these two numbers in the original array must have been different if we got a one here. So either this was zero and this is one or this is one and this is zero. This zero tells us that this number and the number after it, so now we're looping around, these two numbers, they must be the same. So obviously that's a contradiction. 
Like that just cannot be possible. So in this example, we have to return false. Is this the only example where something like that would happen? No. And in fact, the reason that this can happen in the first place is because we are sort of looping around. If it wasn't for looping around, then I don't think it would actually be possible. And some very brief uh, intuition of why that is. I don't know if this will be more helpful or maybe more confusing for some of you guys, but off the top of my head, uh, one way you could think about it is like this, where these two numbers will decide what goes here. They don't necessarily decide it, but they will kind of influence it. Like either this will be a zero or a one and whatever we decide for that, like this is X, then the following rules, and I kind of have it backwards. It's these two that are deciding that. So this zero would tell us that these are both going to be the same, but either way, like if we were just going from left to right and this did not influence the one that comes around, then we would just stop. Eventually we'd have a kind of a chain where like if this is X, then that'll tell me that this is also going to be X or this will be the opposite of X and some kind of sequence like that. But eventually it loops back around. Eventually you'll have something at the end of here that will say that this actually should have been the opposite of X. It should have been a zero or it should have been a one when it was the opposite. And so that's where you get like the conflict, almost like cycle detection in a way. But in terms of how we can use this information to actually like solve the problem, it's not as bad as you would think. I'm going to implement this, I guess, in what I would call a brute force or simulation way. I think it's a relatively approachable way to solve this problem. I think there are a few other solutions that I didn't really look at super closely, but the one I'm going to show you is going to be of linear time and constant space. And I think conceptually it's pretty simple. Like I'll give you the intuition of how I came up with it. So it kind of gets back to that point of looking for like a contradiction as well as knowing that this one just tells us that the first two bits are going to be different. It doesn't tell us what those bits are, whether it's a zero or a one. So how do we run the simulation if we don't know what to do? Are we gonna make a decision tree and have two different possibilities at every single step? No, that would be inefficient. And we also can recognize that just kind of based on like symmetry, I don't know the formal way of putting this, but just in terms of like, if I gave you a string that said zero, one, zero, one, one, and then I invert this string and I give you one, zero, one, zero, zero. I mean, what exactly is the difference between these? Couldn't you just say it's sort of like a reflection or like an inversion of the other? And kind of the way that XOR works as well, if you have zero XOR with zero, that's not any different than one XOR with one, same thing, zero and one and one and zero. These are the same as these. And so kind of just based on that, I know that I can put either a zero or a one in the first spot. It does not matter. As long as I can decide that, the rest of this should let me fill in the rest of the string. And then eventually I can loop back around. And if there's a contradiction, then I return false, otherwise I will return true. The reason I mentioned this stuff as like the intuition is because I don't always necessarily do all of this in my head before I start to implement the code. Sometimes I even notice things in the drawing explanation that I didn't when I was coding this up. And that's why I call it the intuition because it's just to lead you towards what the correct solution actually is, but actually implementing the correct solution might be different from how you came up with the solution. So anyways, knowing that, what I'm going to do is this. I'm just going to arbitrarily put a zero in the first spot. So now I'm going to go through every value in the given array, the derived array. And so this one tells me that these two values are going to be different. Since I decided to put a zero here, for the next value that I'm going to fill in here, I'm just going to do the opposite of the previous one. So that's going to be a one this time. So notice by visiting this value, we populated this guy. And so this, since it's a one, it tells us that these two are different. And so I'm gonna put the opposite of what I had here. So I'm putting a zero here. And then lastly, we get here, which should tell us which value is gonna go here in the first position. And since it's a zero, that tells us that uh, this and the previous value should be the same. And right now they are, so we are good. Now, if I were to change the example a bit, if I uh, extend this a bit, if I put a one here and maybe a zero here, so this told us that there should have been a zero here because these two must be the same. So now I have a one here that tells me these two should be different. So I'm gonna put a one here. And now with this zero, it tells me that this 
and this should be the same, but they are not the same, thus we have to return false. So we won't know until the actual very end if we have a contradiction or not, but the way how I'm gonna implement this in terms of code is we know that for the first value, we are gonna pick zero no matter what. So that's what I'm gonna call the first value. Then I'm gonna have what I call the last, which is gonna be the previous value, I guess. Initially, it'll also be zero, and then we will use this to fill in this part of the array until we get back to the beginning. And so at the end, we can check if these two are equal, then we return true. If they're not equal, that means we had a contradiction, in which case we return false. So now let's code it up. Okay, so coding it up, I'm gonna have that first variable I just mentioned, as well as the last variable. And then at the end, we are literally just gonna return if first is equal to last. This is gonna be pretty quick, so I guess I'll go slow just to really explain everything. We are gonna go through every number in the derived array. We know that each number will tell us something about the pairs in the original array. We already have the first value in the original array. And so if this is a one, then we will flip it. We will set last equal to the opposite of what it happened to be. Otherwise, we will keep last to be the same. So obviously we can clean this code up by just getting rid of that and then change this to just if n is truthy. And I think this is pretty much the whole code. I don't remember if Python actually supports this or not, but let me go ahead and run it. So yeah, it looks like it does. And so this works, it's pretty efficient. There's not really much to explain, I guess, of like what's going on here. I think the whole like cycle detection thing that I was talking about, how it like loops back around is probably the most important part, as well as the fact that we can start with either a zero or a one. I know I didn't give like a formal proof of why this is correct, but I think intuitively it makes a lot of sense once you think about it, but I don't really have a formal proof. So sorry if that's what you were looking for. Maybe somebody can uh, provide their reasoning like in the comments or something. But if you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.